May 26th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 1 Kings chapter 6 and 7 from the Old Testament. In the 480th year after the Israelites left Egypt, in the fourth year of Solomon's reign over Israel, during the month Ziv, the second month, he began building the Lord's temple. The temple King Solomon built for the Lord was 90 feet long, 30 feet wide, and 45 feet high. The porch in front of the main hall of the temple was 30 feet long, corresponding to the width of the temple. It was 15 feet wide, extending out from the front of the temple. He made framed windows for the temple. He built an extension all around the walls of the temple's main hall and holy place and constructed side rooms in it. The bottom floor of the extension was seven and a half feet wide. The middle floor, nine feet wide, and the third floor, ten and a half feet wide. He made ledges on the temple's outer walls so the beams would not have to be inserted into the walls. As the temple was being built, only stones shaped at the quarry were used. The sound of hammers, pickaxes, or any other iron tool was not heard at the temple while it was being built. The entrance to the bottom level of side rooms was on the south side of the temple. Stairs went up to the middle floor and then on up to the third floor. He finished building the temple and covered it with rafters and boards made out of cedar. He built an extension all around the temple. It was seven and a half feet high and it was attached to the temple by cedar beams. The Lord said to Solomon, As for this temple you are building, if you follow my rules, observe my regulations, and obey all my commandments, I will fulfill through you the promise I made to your father David. I will live among the Israelites and will not abandon my people Israel. So Solomon finished building the temple. He constructed the walls inside the temple with cedar planks. He paneled the inside with wood from the floor of the temple to the rafters of the ceiling. He covered the temple floor with boards made from the wood of evergreens. He built a wall 30 feet in from the rear of the temple as a partition for an inner sanctuary that would be the most holy place. He paneled the wall with cedar planks from the floor to the rafters. The main hall in front of the inner sanctuary was 60 feet long. The inside of the temple was all cedar and was adorned with carvings of round ornaments and of flowers in bloom. Everything was cedar. No stones were visible. He prepared the inner sanctuary inside the temple so that the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord could be placed there. The inner sanctuary was 30 feet long, 30 feet wide, and 30 feet high. He plated it with gold as well as the cedar altar. Solomon plated the inside of the temple with gold. He hung golden chains in front of the inner sanctuary and plated the inner sanctuary with gold. He plated the entire inside of the temple with gold as well as the altar inside the inner sanctuary. In the inner sanctuary, he made two cherubs of olive wood. Each stood 15 feet high. Each of the first cherub's wings were seven and a half feet long. Its entire wingspan was 15 feet. The second cherub also had a wingspan of 15 feet. It was identical to the first in measurements and shape. Each cherub stood 15 feet high. He put the cherubs in the inner sanctuary of the temple. Their wings were spread out. One of the first cherub's wings touched one wall, and one of the other cherub's wings touched the opposite wall. The first cherub's other wing touched the second cherub's other wing in the middle of the room. He plated the cherubs with gold. On all the walls around the temple, inside and out, he carved cherubs, palm trees, and flowers in bloom. He plated the floor of the temple with gold inside and out. He made doors of olive wood at the entrance to the inner sanctuary. The pillar on each doorpost was five-sided. On the two doors made of olive wood, he carved cherubs, palm trees, and flowers in bloom, and he plated them with gold. He plated the cherubs and the palm trees with hammered gold. In the same way, he made doorposts of olive wood for the entrance to the main hall, only with four-sided pillars. He also made two doors out of wood from evergreens. Each door had two folding leaves. He carved cherubs, palm trees, and flowers in bloom and plated them with gold. 
leveled out over the carvings. He built the inner courtyard with three rows of chiseled stones and a row of cedar beams. In the month Ziv of the fourth year of Solomon's reign, the foundation was laid for the Lord's temple. In the eleventh year, in the month of Buol, the eighth month, the temple was completed in accordance with all its specifications and blueprints. It took seven years to build. Solomon took thirteen years to build his palace. He named it the Palace of the Lebanon Forest. It was 150 feet long, 75 feet wide, and 45 feet high. It had four rows of cedar pillars and cedar beams above the pillars. The roof above the beams supported by the pillars was also made of cedar. There were 45 beams, 15 per row. There were three rows of windows arranged in sets of three. All of the entrances were rectangular in shape and they were arranged in sets of three. He made a colonnade 75 feet long and 45 feet wide. There was a porch in front of this and pillars and a roof in front of the porch. He also made a throne room called the Hall of Judgment where he made judicial decisions. It was paneled with cedar from the floor to the rafters. The palace where he lived was constructed in a similar way. He also constructed a palace like this hall for Pharaoh's daughter, whom he had married. All of these were built with the best stones, chiseled to the right size and cut with a saw on all sides, from the foundation to the edge of the roof and from the outside to the great courtyard. The foundation was made of large, valuable stones measuring either 15 feet or 12 feet. Above the foundation, the best stones, chiseled to the right size, were used along with cedar, Around the great courtyard were three rows of chiseled stones and one row of cedar beams, like the inner courtyard of the Lord's temple and the hall of the palace. King Solomon sent for Hiram of Tyre. He was the son of a widow from the tribe of Naphtali, and his father was a craftsman in bronze from Tyre. He had the skill and knowledge to make all kinds of works of bronze. He reported to King Solomon and did all the work he was assigned. He fashioned two bronze pillars. Each pillar was 27 feet high and 18 feet in circumference. He made two bronze tops for the pillars. Each was seven and a half feet high. The lattice work on the tops of the pillars was adorned with ornamental wreaths and chains. The top of each pillar had seven groupings of ornaments. When he made the pillars, there were two rows of pomegranate shaped ornaments around the lattice work covering the top of each pillar. The tops of the two pillars in the porch were shaped like lilies and were six feet high. On the top of each pillar, right above the bulge beside the lattice work, there were 200 pomegranate shaped ornaments arranged in rows all the way around. He set up the pillars on the porch in front of the main hall. He erected one pillar on the right side and called it Jachin. He erected the other pillar on the left side and called it Boaz. The tops of the pillars were shaped like lilies, so the construction of the pillars was completed. He also made the large bronze basin called the sea. It measured 15 feet from rim to rim, was circular in shape, and stood seven and a half feet high. Its circumference was 45 feet. Under the rim, all the way around it, were round ornaments arranged in settings 15 feet long. The ornaments were in two rows and had been cast with the sea. The sea stood on top of twelve bowls, three faced northward, three westward, three southward, and three eastward. The sea was placed on top of them, and they all faced outward. It was four fingers thick, and its rim was like that of a cup shaped like a lily blossom. It could hold about twelve thousand gallons. He also made ten bronze movable stands. Each stand was six feet long, six feet wide, and four and a half feet high. The stands were constructed with frames between the joints. On these frames and joints were ornamental lions, bowls, and cherubs. Under the lions and bowls were decorative wreaths. Each stand had four bronze wheels with bronze axles and four supports. Under the basin the supports were fashioned on each side with wreaths. Inside the stand was a round opening that was a foot and a half deep. It had a support that was two and one quarter feet long. On the edge of the opening were carvings in square frames. 
The four wheels were under the frames and the crossbars of the axles were connected to the stand. Each wheel was two and one quarter feet high. The wheels were constructed like chariot wheels. Their crossbars, rims, spokes, and hubs were made of cast metal. Each stand had four supports, one per side projecting out from the stand. On top of each stand was a round opening three quarters of a foot deep. There were also supports and frames on top of the stands. He engraved ornamental cherubs, lions, and palm trees on the plates of the supports and frames wherever there was room, with wreaths all around. He made the ten stands in this way. All of them were cast in one mold and were identical in measurements and shape. He also made ten bronze basins, each of which could hold about 240 gallons. Each basin was six feet in diameter. There was one basin for each stand. He put five basins on the south side of the temple and five on the north side. He put the sea on the south side in the southeast corner. Hiram also made basins, shovels, and bowls. He finished all the work on the Lord's temple he had been assigned by King Solomon. He made the two pillars, the two bowl-shaped tops of the pillars, the lattice work for the bowl-shaped tops of the two pillars, the 400 pomegranate-shaped ornaments for the lattice work of the two pillars. Each lattice work had two rows of these ornaments at the bowl-shaped top of the pillar, the 10 movable stands with their 10 basins, the big bronze basin called the sea with its 12 bowls underneath, and the pots, shovels, and bowls. All these things King Solomon assigned Hiram to make for the Lord's temple were made from polished bronze. The king had them cast in earth foundries in the region of the Jordan between Succoth and Zarethan. Solomon left all these items unweighed. There were so many of them they did not weigh the bronze. Solomon also made all these items for the Lord's temple. The gold altar, the gold table on which was kept the bread of the presence, the pure gold lampstands at the entrance to the inner sanctuary, five on the right and five on the left, the gold flower-shaped ornaments, lamps and tongs, the pure gold bowls, trimming shears, basins, pans and censers, and the gold door sockets for the inner sanctuary, the most holy place, and for the doors of the main hall of the temple. When King Solomon finished constructing the Lord's temple, he put the holy items that belonged to his father David, the silver, gold, and other articles in the treasuries of the Lord's temple. God, with listening to all the spectacularness of the temple that Solomon built for you, along with a lot of hard work from Hiram, I had the stunningness of it and how spectacular and how detailed everything was. And we sometimes read these passages and get so overwhelmed at that part of it that we miss something that's really important right as one chapter goes into the next chapter. It says in the 11th year in the month bull, the eighth month, the temple was completed in accordance with all its specifications and blueprints. It took seven years to build. And then the next verse in chapter seven, it says Solomon took 13 years to build his palace. That's exactly what we do, God. We build up our temple. We build up our kingdom and spend way more time doing that than we do spending in your temple and building up your kingdom. I think if any of us intentionally sat down and and wrote our day out, let's say that we actually, once in a blue moon, actually get eight hours sleep. So we'll take eight hours out of the 24. And that leaves us with 16 more hours. And it would be interesting to see a percentage. So with Solomon, we're looking at about 50%. Took about seven years to build your temple and about 13 to build his. So he spent twice as much time on his temple than yours. I don't even think we do that though. I think if we counted up throughout the day, um, our Bible study, maybe we do a morning Bible study and or maybe a nighttime study. 
we pray to you bits and pieces throughout the day and maybe we intentionally go out and talk to a couple people about you God but the rest of the day is all about us it's all about watching TV it's all about hanging out with friends it's all all about going grocery shopping figuring out what we want for dinner uh, it's all about sitting in front of the computer and playing on Facebook we, we don't even do twice as much like Solomon did of work on our own kingdom. I would say it's probably like eight to one or nine to one compared to how much time we actually spend with you. Of those 16 hours, I can guarantee that, speaking on my behalf, I can guarantee that most of us definitely don't, don't spend more than a couple hours. So what is that, 10%? We we'll get in a few extra hours on Sunday. So... Pastor Francis Chan has a great quote about this. It says, Our greatest fear should not be of failure, but of succeeding at things in life that don't really matter. And I know to you, God, these, these relationships we have are important. You're not asking us to cast those aside. Um, our kids are important. Our, our husbands or our wives are important. Our friendships are important. Those relationships are important in building for your kingdom. But even those need to be focused on you. Is our heart really so centered and focused on you, God, that everybody else and everything else will take a back seat to that intentional faith and focus towards you? God, we have all of these idols in our life, all these things that really don't matter. That movie we just saw the other night does nothing to build your kingdom. That book we read does nothing to build your kingdom. Those websites we went and saw, nothing to build your kingdom. Those conversations we had with our kids or our uh, husband or wife or our friends, none of those things built up your kingdom. All of those things are things that will burn up on the fire. Only the things that will help build your kingdom will actually remain there on the fire and be of any value to you when we spend eternity with you. God, I don't, I don't think we get the extreme faith that you have called us to. I don't think we get the radical, overwhelming, intentional faith that you have created us for I definitely know that we don't get that it's not about us we definitely don't get that we keep making it all about us through control through actions through our will God today I just pray that we go through this day and we think really hard about Solomon you blessed him in so many ways you gave him discernment you gave him money. You also promised a blessing to him that through the Davidic line that the Messiah would eventually come. So many blessings. And yet it was still all about Solomon. It was all about his temple. And it was all about his temple for his wife that he wasn't supposed to marry. And even though Part of the time he spent building this amazing temple that even after all these years we still talk about. I know that's not what you called him to do. You want all of us. You are a jealous God who wants all of us. When you say you want no other idols in front of us, no other gods in front of us, you aren't joking around. We aren't put here on earth for our own desires and our own will. We are put here on earth. You created us. You intentionally set out to create us. And we are here to glorify you. God, help us understand those priorities today. That it's all about you. And it's so not about us. Help us keep focus today of everything that we do, of taking stock in it, 
does this really matter? Does this really matter? Not to me, not to the people of the world, but does this really matter to you, God? Is what I'm about to do, is what I'm about to partake in, does it really matter to you? And when I say that I'm all in, that I'm a Christian, that I am your child, that you have called me, am I really fully in on this relationship? Or does loving you and loving your people permeate everything about my life? My actions, my words, my thoughts, my deeds. Can people look at me and know that I am yours? Or is it my kingdom or my temple that they see instead? God, help us keep focused on you today and on the things that truly matter. Not the things of the world, but the things that bring you glory and help build your kingdom. In your son's name I pray. Amen.